A few days after their wedding, I was at home when the doorbell rang. I checked the monitor and saw Amanda, Eric's new wife, standing there. I came by because we wanted to talk to you, Hillary. Could you let me in? I opened the front door and invited Amanda into my house. What could this be about? She came to my house alone without an appointment. Eric told me that you're divorced, right, Hillary? She asked me out of the blue. I figured she must have some ulterior motive, but I answered calmly. Yes, it was a long time ago when Eric was just a little boy. But what does that have to do with anything? Well, I wasn't expecting much since you're single but I was wondering about the inheritance. I mean, even if it's just a formality, I think it's important to check on your assets. Now I understood why Amanda had come here without Eric. This daughter-in-law standing in front of me had come to see how much savings I had. It seemed Amanda realized she wouldn't get any money out of me, so she said, Actually, Hillary, I came here today to ask you for something. Ask me for something? When I asked, Amanda nodded and smiled at me. I started to get a really bad feeling. I want to cut ties with you since you're practically a stranger to me. Amanda blurted out. Practically a stranger? Well, isn't it true? So from now on, we don't want you to have anything to do with our family. I definitely don't want to take care of you when you get old. So let's just cut ties and be done with it. Amanda said this with a cheerful smile, leaving me completely stunned. Seeing that I was at a loss for words, Amanda stood up as if satisfied. Well, then, neither Eric nor I will have anything to do with you from now on. So don't bother contacting us. Goodbye now. With that, she quickly left the house. My name is Hillary. I'm in my 60s, living alone in a rural area, relying on my pension. Back in my younger days, I was a real workaholic and managed to save up quite a bit. I grew up in a poor family, so right after graduating high school, I started working. I didn't have any desire to go to college, instead, I just wanted to start earning money as soon as possible. I met my husband at the company where I got my first job. He was close to my age, and we gradually grew closer through shared interests until we eventually started dating. When we first met, he was already thinking about starting his own business. I've been saving money all this time to make my dream come true. That's an amazing dream. I'll support you all the way. He smiled happily and said, Then, let's get married when I make that dream come true. He held my hand and made that promise to me. To support him, I worked as hard as I could. Thanks to those efforts, he succeeded in starting his business a year after making that promise. And we really did get married. Before long, our son Eric was born, making us a family of three. Though life wasn't particularly stable, we were happy in our own modest way. But that happiness didn't last long. I found out that my husband, whom I had trusted, was cheating on me. We had many discussions, but in the end, he chose his affair over me, and we got divorced. It was a shock, but I couldn't afford to be depressed. With Eric in my life, I couldn't just stand still. I worked hard, raising Eric on my own, and somehow managed to get by. While we never lived a wealthy life, things were more stable than when my husband was struggling to get his business off the ground. I was also able to save money more easily. Eventually, Eric grew up, studied diligently, and got into college. 
I paid for all of Eric's college expenses. I wanted him to enjoy his college life without any worries. The money I had saved up over the years for his future really paid off. As a parent, it's the greatest joy. Thanks, Mom. I'll work hard so I can repay you someday. Eric said that to me, his eyes welling up with tears. There's no need for him to repay me. As long as he lives a happy life, that's all I need to be happy. Eric graduated from college without any issues and landed a job at a well-known company in New York. After Eric became independent and moved to the city, I decided to sell my house and move into a one-bedroom apartment. Even though the house Eric grew up in was no longer ours, it was actually his idea for me to move. I think it's time for you to start living your own life, Mom. Living my own life? Yes. Now that I'm moving to the city and living on my own, I think you should do what makes you happy. For example, selling this big house and moving to a smaller place. He had a point. I had originally gotten the house after my divorce from my ex-husband. Back then, we didn't have much money, but we were able to buy this house at a very low price. It was an old house, and I had started to feel that it wasn't really suitable for living in anymore. Eric's suggestion opened my eyes. Moving? I never thought about that. There are apartments made just for single people nowadays. I think you'd be more comfortable living in one of those. The more Eric talked, the more convinced I became. And so, I decided to move into an apartment. Since I had reached the age where I could collect my pension, I shifted to working part-time while receiving my benefits. I never imagined that at this age, I'd be living in such a different way. I was actually pretty excited about this new chapter in my life. Living alone in the apartment turned out to be quite fulfilling. However, spending more time at home made me feel a bit restless, to be honest. As a workaholic and someone who's always been thrifty, I wasn't used to having so much free time. One day, during this new routine, Eric came to visit my apartment. Hey, Mom. It's been a while. It had been some time since I last saw Eric, and though he looked a little more mature, that kind smile of his hadn't changed. Seeing him, I felt a sense of relief. It seemed like he was doing well since moving to the city. It's been a while. But what brings you here all of a sudden? Well, there's something I wanted to talk to you about. Eric said, looking a bit embarrassed. Well, come on in. I invited him inside, still curious about what he wanted to say. Actually, I'm thinking about getting married. Getting married? Eric's unexpected words made me ask again without thinking. It wasn't surprising that I was shocked. Since Eric had never mentioned anything about his relationship before. What's she like? She's my colleague, a senior at my company. Her name is Amanda. So she's older than you. When I responded, Eric blushed a little, clearly embarrassed. Eric had always had a thing for older girls, even when he was young. It seems that hasn't changed now that he's an adult. I just proposed to her the other day, and she said yes. So now we're planning to get married and have our wedding. Really? That's wonderful. Congratulations. I had been so surprised that I forgot to congratulate him, but I quickly corrected that. Hearing my words, Eric looked genuinely happy. As I continued to listen, it became clear that Amanda, Eric's fiancée, had a bit of a strong personality. Given Eric's naturally quiet nature, it seemed she often took the lead in their relationship. 
But no matter who she was, as long as Eric had chosen her, I was ready to welcome her into my family. I couldn't bring her with me today, but Amanda said she'd like to meet you, so I'll bring her over next time. All right, I'm looking forward to it, but Eric? Yes, what is it? I gently reminded Eric. Next time, make sure to call ahead before you come. I'm not always home, you know. Eric's expression made it clear he had completely forgotten about that. I'm sure he was so eager to tell me in person that he just showed up. Even though a phone call would have sufficed, he made the effort to come in person. I was deeply grateful for how much Eric cared about me. The next time Eric contacted me was a week later. On the day he was supposed to bring Amanda, I woke up early, feeling a bit nervous as I waited for him to arrive. I couldn't help but wonder how strong Amanda's personality really was. Since I only had Eric's perspective, it was hard for me to judge. To be honest, I was a little anxious. As I was thinking about this, the doorbell rang. I checked the monitor and saw Eric, so I headed to the door. Welcome. I greeted them warmly, and there stood Eric and a woman. Mom, this is Amanda, the woman I've been seeing. Amanda, this is my mom. Eric introduced us, and I smiled at Amanda, who was standing before me. Nice to meet you, Amanda. Thank you for coming all this way. I greeted her, but Amanda didn't smile. Instead, she stared at me intently. It felt like I was being scrutinized. It wasn't the kind of behavior you'd expect from someone coming to meet their future-in-law for the first time. Amanda was openly staring at me without any hesitation. At this point, I had nothing but a bad feeling. After a while, Amanda, seeming satisfied, lazily returned my greeting. Hi, I'm Amanda. I felt a little guilty, but while Amanda was observing me, I was also taking the opportunity to observe her. She had a somewhat sharp look, her makeup was heavy, almost reminiscent of a young party girl, and her outfit was flashy. It was obvious that the bag she was carrying was a brand name. Of course, I couldn't judge her personality based on appearances alone, but I couldn't help but glance at her now and then. I invited them into the living room, and we sat down to talk. The first topic that came up was their wedding. As soon as the subject was brought up, Amanda's eyes lit up, and she leaned forward. The wedding has been my dream since I was little. Oh, really? That's why I refuse to compromise on anything. I plan to get everything I want, so please be prepared for that, Hillary. Amanda said this directly to me. Okay, do your best. I responded, though I was a bit taken aback. Why was Amanda saying this to me? I could understand her telling Eric, her future husband, but I didn't see why she needed to inform me. I glanced at Eric, feeling a bit concerned, but he didn't seem bothered at all, and was smiling at Amanda. That made me even more worried. After discussing some plans for the future, Eric and Amanda finally left. I was relieved that it ended without incident. But Amanda seemed like quite a handful. Her intense focus on the wedding was a bit off-putting, and her disinterest in any other topics was also concerning. I wondered if it was okay to just stand by and watch over the two of them. These thoughts ran through my mind as I reflected on the day's events. But Eric is an adult now, and there's nothing I can do for him anymore. With that in mind, I decided not to interfere further. I thought that would be the end of it, but a few days later, Eric came back again. This time, he seemed unusually down. 
What happened? A few days after meeting you, Amanda and I went to discuss the wedding plans. But it's going to cost way more than we expected. Eric said this, looking downcast. It turns out that he and Amanda had been making good progress with the wedding preparations. However, during the meeting, Eric was shocked when he saw the total cost. I had expected as much. From the way Amanda talked before, it was clear that she wanted a very lavish wedding. She had mentioned wanting to hold the ceremony at a certain theme park when they visited my home, so it was no surprise that it would cost more than usual. It's only natural that it would be expensive. I know, but I already promised to pay for it, so I can't back out now. Eric responded in a dejected voice. It seemed he was planning to cover all the wedding expenses himself. But if this was Amanda's dream wedding, why wasn't she contributing anything? I couldn't help but feel puzzled and uneasy, but it was clear that Eric wanted to prioritize Amanda's wishes. But Amanda really wants this dream wedding, so I want to make it happen for her somehow. But do you even have that kind of money? If you did, you wouldn't have come here to talk to me, right? If I don't have enough, I'm thinking about taking out a loan. That's why I wanted to tell you first, Mom. Eric answered. His face deadly serious, and I could tell he meant every word. He wasn't asking me for money, probably because he assumed I didn't have any as a single parent. I took an envelope from the drawer and handed it to Eric. Here, use this. What is this? I was planning to give it to you when you became independent. There's about $60,000 in it. When I said that, Eric's eyes widened in shock. The truth was, I had been saving this money for Eric's future. I hadn't anticipated using it for something like a wedding but I was glad it could help him now. That should be enough, right? When I asked, Eric's eyes filled with tears, and he smiled with pure joy. Mom, thank you so much. I couldn't help but feel a bit exasperated by his reaction, but I also found it endearing. Eric is such a kind-hearted person. He always puts others before himself and it seems that hasn't changed as he's grown older. For someone like Eric, I didn't mind giving up that $60,000, even if it was to fulfill Amanda's extravagant wishes. I decided to keep quiet about covering all the wedding expenses to protect Eric's pride. There was no need for Amanda to know. Eventually, Eric and Amanda had their wedding at the theme park as planned. When I arrived at the venue, I was amazed by how lavish it was. Given how grand it was, it made sense that it would be expensive. Amanda was in high spirits the whole time, and Eric looked genuinely happy watching her. I was truly glad that my money was useful. The beautiful wedding went off without a hitch. A few days after the wedding, the doorbell rang while I was at home. I checked the monitor and saw Amanda standing there alone. Amanda, what brings you here? I called out to her, and she smiled warmly. I came by because I wanted to talk to you, Hillary. Could you let me in? Well, come on in. I opened the door and invited Amanda inside. What could this be about? She came to my house alone without an appointment. I motioned for Amanda to have a seat. She glanced around the house, her eyes darting from one corner to another. As I braced myself for whatever she was about to say, Amanda narrowed her eyes and looked at me. Then she asked me, Eric told me you're divorced, right Hillary? The unexpected question made me pause as I was about to pour tea. But I quickly smiled gently 
trying not to show any sign of being rattled. Yes, that's right. It happened when Eric was very young. Oh, I see. What did you do with the alimony from that? Is there any left? I used it for Eric's education and other expenses. But why do you ask? I responded firmly, still smiling, despite Amanda's blunt questioning. I was a bit shaken, but my irritation with Amanda far outweighed it. Without flinching at my silent anger, Amanda calmly continued. Well, since you're single, I didn't expect much, but I just wanted to check on your assets since you were still technically family. Now it was clear why Amanda had come to my house without Eric. This daughter-in-law of mine wanted to find out how much I had in savings. Even Eric, my own son, didn't know about the money I had saved. I had set a personal rule that I wouldn't tell him about it unless it was necessary, like when I gave him the $60,000. I didn't want to be relied on for money in the future. That savings was something I had put away for myself, and I had no intention of giving it to anyone, not even Eric. Sensing she wouldn't get any more information from me, Amanda said. I see. So with just your pension and part-time work, it must be a pretty modest lifestyle. That's all I needed to know. It seemed I had successfully hidden the truth. Still, I kept smiling as Amanda's gaze became even sharper. Actually, Hillary, I came here today to ask you for something. A favor? I asked, and Amanda nodded enthusiastically, smiling again. I started to get a really bad feeling. Eric and I are now a family. So that means we're a separate family from you now, right? What are you trying to say? I mean, I want to cut ties with you since you're practically a stranger to us now. Amanda declared. Practically a stranger? Well, isn't it true? So from now on, I don't want you involved with our family. I definitely don't want to take care of you when you're older. So let's just cut ties now. Amanda said this with a cheerful smile, leaving me completely stunned. First, she comes to my house unannounced, then starts digging into my finances and personal matters I'd rather keep private. Now, realizing she won't get anything from me, she suddenly wants to cut ties. This is completely outrageous. Is this really how you treat your in-laws? While I remained silent, she stood up as if satisfied. Well then, Eric and I won't have anything to do with you anymore, so please don't contact us either. All right, take care. With that, Amanda quickly left the house. I was so stunned by the whirlwind that was Amanda that I couldn't even respond. For a while, I just stood there in shock, but then I quickly snapped out of it and called Eric. There's no way that my kind-hearted Eric would actually agree to cut ties with me like Amanda said. Thinking this had to be a mistake, I clutched my phone with trembling hands. Thankfully, Eric answered right away. Eric, Amanda just came over and said she wants to cut ties with me. Are you really planning on doing that too? I asked in a panic and Eric responded as if he had just remembered something. Well, Amanda doesn't want to have anything to do with you, so I think I'll just go along with what she wants. The moment I heard those words, my mind went blank. I couldn't believe it. Eric was really going to let Amanda dictate even something as important as our relationship as mother and son. I was completely disappointed in him. The kind, considerate Eric I thought I knew seemed to be nothing more than a figment of my imagination. I'm grateful to you for raising me, and I appreciate everything you've done. But from now on, 
I want us to live our lives without relying on each other. Living independently and cutting ties are two different things. But Amanda doesn't want to have anything to do with you, and I think it can't be helped. I was beyond exasperated. At the same time, I was so shocked that I almost blurted out everything Amanda had said to me. But I swallowed my emotions and calmly replied, Fine, but don't ever rely on me again. Consider the money I gave you for your wedding as the final payment. I won't be helping you anymore. To this, Eric simply responded, I understand. His response made it seem like he didn't grasp the gravity of cutting ties with his own mother. After hearing Eric's reply, I hung up the phone. For a while after, I just sat there, unable to move. I felt an overwhelming sense of regret, not just for the $60,000 I spent on the wedding, but for how Eric didn't even acknowledge it. I also felt deep resentment toward Amanda, who had driven a wedge between us. But more than anything, I was heartbroken that my bond with Eric had been severed in such a way. A few hours later, I called up my friend and went out for drinks at a bar. This friend is one of my best friends, someone I've been close with since our school days. We know everything about each other, and she knows Eric well too. Wow, it sounds like Eric is totally under his wife's thumb. Yeah, it sure seems that way. I was venting to my friend about what happened that day. She listened to me kindly, nodding along. I tried to act like it didn't bother me, but honestly, I'm devastated. Amanda kept asking about money. It feels like Eric only talked to me about the wedding expenses because they wanted the money from the start. Yeah, it really does seem like they took advantage of you. Maybe they figured if they brought up the idea of going into debt, you'd offer to help out. Hearing this from my friend only made me feel worse. I had given $60,000 to my son and his wife, who had turned out to be like this. Honestly, I couldn't help but think I really misjudged the situation. What's going to happen to me now? I had this vague sense of an ease. Well then, why not use the money you've saved up to do something you love? Do something I love. Surprised by my friend's unexpected suggestion, I looked up. Yeah. Go somewhere far away from Eric and his wife. Like, why not move abroad? She said with a cheerful laugh, showing me something. It looked like a plane ticket. The destination was listed as Kuala Lumpur from New York. Malaysia? That's right. I was just about to invite you on a trip. What do you think? Why not visit first before you decide to move? She said this with a bright smile. Whenever I was going through tough times, my friend was always there to support me. She had lost her husband a few years ago and had no children, so she'd been living alone since then. But she seemed to be thoroughly enjoying her life, living independently and full of energy. So, to take my mind off things, I decided to go on a trip to Malaysia with her. I hadn't flown much in my life, so I felt pretty nervous as we boarded the plane and headed for Malaysia. It had been a long time since I'd been on a plane, and I was quite anxious. Everything about Malaysia was new to me. We visited the Petronas Twin Towers, which I'd only seen in pictures, and other tourist spots. I really enjoyed the trip. I've always planned to move abroad. My friend said one evening as we looked at the night sky from our hotel. I always wanted to ask you to come with me, but I hesitated because I knew you had Eric. But the truth is, I've always wanted to live here with you. Really? 
with me? I couldn't hide my surprise at her unexpected words. Had she needed me this whole time? The thought warmed my heart. Seeing my reaction, my friend smiled gently and asked, What do you think, Hillary? Wouldn't you like to live here? I seriously considered her question. Malaysia's cost of living is much lower than in the U.S., with my savings and pension, I could probably live comfortably. I think the language barrier will be okay in the current situation. And if I were to live with my friend, it would certainly be an interesting experience. Instead of feeling anxious, I started to get excited about the possibilities ahead. I think I'd like to try living here, and if I get to live with you, I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun. When I said that, my friend laughed joyfully. I decided it was time to forget about Eric. From now on, I'm no longer Eric's parent, and there's no need to watch over Eric and Amanda. I realized it was okay to spend time on myself for a change. After returning to the U.S., my friend and I started the process of moving. There were a few hurdles, but we successfully made our way to Malaysia. Once I got there, I realized that living somewhere is quite different from just visiting. But I was having a great time every day with her. Before I knew it, a year had passed since we moved to Malaysia. I had gotten used to the lifestyle and was enjoying every day to the fullest. Then one day, I received a call on my phone. The call seemed to be from the U.S. When I checked the number, I realized it was from Eric, the son I had cut ties with. At first, I ignored it, thinking, what could he want now? But Eric kept calling persistently. Unsure of what to do, I consulted my friend and decided to answer the phone just this once. Hey mom, it's been a while, it's me. When I answered, I heard Eric's cheerful voice. It hadn't changed at all since the last time I heard it. But that didn't mean I could just forget what happened. Who is this? What are you talking about? It's your son. Eric responded happily, but his reaction only made me more wary. Eric and I had cut ties. I never expected to hear from him again. So why was he calling now? I took a deep breath to calm myself. I was told we were cutting ties, so I don't have a son anymore. Yeah, I know, and I'm really sorry about that. I'm asking for your forgiveness. Eric's tone was casual as if he wasn't really listening to what I was saying. I had already decided I would never forgive Eric, but I figured I could at least hear him out. So, what do you want? Well, we had a baby. Eric said excitedly. I motioned for my friend to come over and put the phone on speaker. A baby, Mom. You're a grandmother now. We want you to come meet the baby. Oh, really? Amanda is here with me now. She wants to see you too. I'll put her on the phone. At that moment, Eric passed the phone to Amanda, and that annoying grating voice filled the line. Oh, Hillary. Long time no see. I sighed and decided not to respond to her. My friend, sitting next to me, was shaking with laughter at my obvious reaction. It's your grandchild, Hillary. You should come with gifts and visit us. We went by your house, but we were shocked to find you'd move. The moment I heard Amanda say this, my suspicions were confirmed. Eric and Amanda must have had the baby and found themselves needing money. It made sense that they would turn to me thinking I might still have some savings. Maybe they thought I'd be thrilled about having a grandchild and that I'd offer to help. 
From what Amanda was saying, it seemed they hadn't realized I had moved abroad. Hey mom, where are you anyway? There's no way I'm telling you that, considering we've cut ties, and since I don't have a son anymore, that child isn't my grandchild. When I said that, there was a stunned silence on the other end. After a moment, they both started speaking, sounding flustered. Come on, you're still going on about that? I already apologized, didn't I? Yeah, Hillary, stop being so stubborn and come see us. I exchanged a glance with my friend. If you can pay me back the $60,000 I spent on your wedding all at once, then maybe I'll forgive you. $60,000 for the wedding? Don't be ridiculous. That was money Eric spent for me. Oh, really? He came to me claiming he didn't have any money, but I guess he didn't tell you that. I told Eric that the $60,000 was a parting gift. I could hear Eric and Amanda arguing on the other end of the line. What's going on? No, it's not like that. My friend was laughing so hard, trying not to be heard. And watching her made me start laughing too. Aren't you ashamed of yourselves? I'm embarrassed to think of you as my family. At this, their attention snapped back to me, and they started desperately saying all sorts of things. Hillary, wait. We're really grateful for the wedding money. So let's just put the past behind us and get along again. I want to see you, Mom. And that $60,000 was meant for me, wasn't it? So, I don't think I need to pay it back. I was beyond exasperated. That was before we cut ties. If you hadn't turned your back on me then, you might have continued to benefit from my support. But we can still make things right if we start fresh now. Eric was clearly trying hard to get back into my good graces. With Amanda chiming in from the background. I sigh deeply, utterly fed up. There's no chance we'll ever meet again. You'll never find out where I am, no matter how much you search. So, this is really goodbye. Farewell, I said, ignoring their protests as I hung up the phone. They're living in a fantasy world, aren't they? Absolutely, it's just ridiculous. We looked at each other and laughed, then continued enjoying our drinks. To make sure my phone didn't ring again, I turned it off. After that, I changed my phone number, as my friend suggested. I was never very good with smartphones, so I didn't really know how to block or reject calls. To make sure I wouldn't be contacted again, I decided to change my number entirely. Before I changed it, I got a call from a relative telling me that Eric and Amanda had come to them asking for money. Apparently, Amanda had been quite reckless with money and had borrowed from several companies. As I heard more details, I found out that Amanda had already been in debt for hundreds of thousands of dollars before she got married. All those expensive brand name bags and long, manicured nails were funded by debt. Honestly, I wasn't surprised. Knowing Amanda, it was all just for show. This led to fights between her and Eric, and eventually, Amanda had to sell her bags and other belongings to repay some of the debt. But of course, that didn't solve all their problems. This caused a huge rift between Amanda and Eric, and they eventually divorced. Amanda took custody of their child and returned to her parents' houses, but when her parents heard what had happened, they were furious. While they were taking care of their grandchild, they ignored Amanda. Feeling abandoned, Amanda started frequenting host clubs to fill the void, racking up even more debt. Amanda's life spiraled out of control, and I couldn't help but laugh at the thought. Eric's life took a similar downward turn. 
On top of paying child support, he was too embarrassed to tell anyone about the divorce after their big, lavish wedding, so he kept pretending they were still a happy family. But eventually, the truth came out, and his friends, fed up with his lies, started distancing themselves from him. The only people who would still talk to Eric were women at the bars he frequented. With Amanda caught up in her obsession with host clubs, it seemed that the two of them were doomed to similar fates. When I explained to my relatives that I had cut ties with Eric and what had happened back then, they understood. There wouldn't be anyone left to help them now. Eric used to be such a good, responsible kid. But after he got involved with Amanda, he changed completely. But that's no longer my concern. I've decided not to dwell on the past and to live my own life. Now, I've started making jewelry with my friend. It's just a hobby for now, but maybe one day we'll sell our pieces. My second life is just beginning.